welcome to the Corona Chronicles, you guys. I have with me LeVar Walker. What up, LeVar? Hey, what's happening, T? What's popping? Hey, nothing, man. Just chilling in these Corona times, trying to keep these big wheels turning around here. Yeah, How are same, you? same here, man. Just one day at a time, uh, working on the front lines and just, you know, taking it easy. So with working on the front lines, I'm sure that you probably are overworked one. <laughs> not really. Guarantee. You said no, nah, not really? Nah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm a pharmacist, uh, just working in retail pharmacy. I'm not oh. really feeling the, uh, I'm not really feeling the brunt of it. Are you calling me? I think you just called me. No. That one you? Okay. But I'm not. I'm not feeling the the brunt. They probably feeling more the brunt of it uh, in hospitals, in um, certain hospitals, and you know maybe New York or something like that. But we mm -hmm. only got four. We only got like thirteen hundred deaths in the state of Georgia. Oh, okay, so that's a lot going on in Georgia right now. Mm, I mean, out of ten point six million people, I, I, I mean. It's unfortunate, but uh, thirteen hundred out of ten point six million—that's not a huge, huge number, you know. So, what I'm saying is a lot going on. I'm speaking more to the fact that you know, besides the coronavirus, everybody is now, you know, media is is focused on the death of that young man, um, and oh, the yeah. two men finally being arrested. So. That's what I was speaking more to is that it's, it's a lot going on right now in oh, Georgia. Yeah, but, yeah, and then yeah. you guys were also the first state where people kind of, you know, relax the rules and things like that. So how you feel about, you know, people going out and still kicking it? Like, are you one of the people you out in them streets just, just hanging out? <laughs> I mean, I mean, not not really. Um, my my views on it. You know, like if any, you, you know, it's an unfortunate uh, virus, you know what I mean, if anybody's been impacted by it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in, in I, I'm just looking at the numbers. Right. It's just some, some's not adding up quite right. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we've been in it since March or January. It's like, May and we had thirteen hundred deaths. Like I say, at a population of ten point six million people, mm -hmm. that's a very small drop in the bucket. To so I, I I'm kind of indifferent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, without you know, I'm a little bit indifferent. Like I I don't know, but you know, I know people get up in arms and shit, and they're so sensitive about this shit that you know. So Are I you just, a capper? Yeah, yeah, I'm a cap. Yes. I'm all in your business. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I had to put my little shimmy on it. On you. Don't make me start. See, I I had this red on for a reason. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I know a lot of good dudes that are cap. Mm -hmm. A lot of good mm -hmm. yeah, most mm -hmm. definitely. So with the virus, of course, the, the clubs are closed, the stages are shut. Well no, nah, they no, nah, they they everything well that they they rolling out. I mean, clubs will be open this weekend, I believe. Nightclubs and bars. So they opening back up. Was your comedy affected besides the fact of not being on stage and not being able to perform? Yeah, like man. being on quarantine help you, hinder you? Well, uh, on the entertainment side, it definitely uh, hindered me because I had a show that was uh, in production. We were supposed to start filming on the show, on a new show with Amy Schumer on Hulu, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, production is shut down, as well as a couple of gigs. I had a couple of uh, comedy clubs I was headlining that got canceled as well. So, yeah. Definitely well, I'm really eager to see everybody get back to it. So, of course, this is Sex Talk with T. Gray. Has a sex life been affected? You married man, single man? I'm married. Oh. I'm married. I've been uh, This is 10 years. Um, okay, that's so good. That's good. That's time in. That's good yeah, time. We've, been, we've been together like, shit, damn near 20. You know what I'm saying? Like dating and, you know, with marriage or whatever. 
But now we've been fucking around and we've been doing some fucking in there. <laughs> we some fucking yeah, so, so no change then in the dynamic due to the virus. Not having more sex, less sex. Get out my face. I'm tired of looking at you. <laughs> None of that going on. You know, we've been fucking for 20 years. So it's not, it's not like we jackrabbits around here. Like we were younger. You know what I mean? But that comes with age. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, you know, we do our fucking, we get it in. But you know, you, you get older, you know, your, your marriage, it grows. You know what I'm saying? Like every 10 years, things change, you grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all just get older together, the friendship. The, it's, it's just so many different uh, levels uh, to marry life. You know what I mean? So it's so many different uh what what do I wanna say? Parallels. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of people have kind of taken its time to, you know, reignite flame and add a little spice to things and things of that nature. You know, everybody has found their own way to, you know, en enhance their personal experiences. Um just because I guess, you know, people are reflecting a little bit differently um now since they've been home and they've been in the house. So. Ain't nothing to really do but just fucking get drunk or something, you know. <laughs> fuck, drink, laugh. <laughs> do the fuck, drink, and laugh, you know. All at the same damn time. Yeah, just fuck it, you know. So, what is most important about sex to you? Um, I'm a, I'm a man. I just want to bust a nut. Okay. Uh, I just, you know. I like a nice gentle ball rub while I'm fucking and uh just to just to shoot my get my niggas out out of that cannon, man. You know? That's, that's what I like. Do you think that um and of course you're not you're not an old guy, but you are getting older. Forty three. So again, you're not an old guy. I'll be, I'll be forty three this year. So I'm forty two, so do you have any fear of, of being the older guy and say things not performing the same way? Like, do do you think about those things? Like, you know, what if I can't just get my nut? What if, what if that the most important thing you can't do? If I can't get it, yeah, what would you do? Uh, kill myself. Oh shit, man! No, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, I, I never thought about it, man. I, I don't know shit. I don't know. I guess one day it will come to that. You just can't do nothing no more. Fuck, I don't know. I mean, I think like too. You know, when you when you get older, your priorities change. It's, it's more about just loving somebody and fucking taking care of your finances and family and shit like mm -hmm. that. You're not even really thinking about fucking all the time. You know, I mean, I watch my little porn and shit like that, but you know, it is what it is. I, at the end of that, I just won't get some money. Shit, I, I, it's whatever. You know what I mean? Ain't now, in my 20s, like when I'm young, you know, 20s, my dick wouldn't go down. <laughs> when you wake up, that motherfucker ready. That nigga, that nigga wake you up, nigga, what's happening? <laughs> we need to get it, you know what I'm saying? So right. I mean, now, you know what I mean, it's calm. Sometimes I'm happy. So sometimes I'm not waking up every fucking morning with a with a fucking heart on. So uh so you know, it's it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, I I welcome the changes that come with age as it relates to my sex life um i think i didn't even really get settled into I myself think, until i was I, in my 30s yeah i think women become more horny the older y'all get that's what they say do you believe that <laughs> i do agree that women do have a peak and and i would also agree that men have a peak but when those things were first came into play and people started to, to to really recognize it, write it down, put it in books, I don't think that they considered, you know, 
20, 30 years from now, it may be different. So where they say a lot of men, you know, are having, you guys are having peaks in your 20s and women is in our, our late 30s at our early 40s. I am finding that there are men now who are late 40s, early 50s, killing the fucking game. Killing the fucking game. And, and it might not be you know, for a whole hour, which I don't think that necessarily constitutes great sex, but it might not be that for a whole hour, but it could be fucking mind blowing, take you to another level, Mm -hmm. solid 20 minutes, you be sleep for hours. (laughs) And I don't think, I, I think young dudes can go, but I don't think they put that same, that same type of tenacity, that same um, well, I, I, well, I, I think like, you know, when women date an older man, I think the uh, older guy is going to captivate your mind m- m- more than the younger guy. Either way, he's going to, older man will probably listen to you more, understand certain psychological needs that the woman has, which would probably increase the uh, experience increase the sexual activity experience because the young nigga just want to fuck he ain't thinking about what you do. he don't give a fuck no shit he just ready to pull it out the nigga ain't got no foreplay nothing <laughs> so um, I am I am slightly overbooked oh damn it's okay though because we're going to make it work I'm going to bring delay in Oh shit! <laughs> oh, is delay coming in now? Yeah, I'm gonna bring him in. I'm gonna have him use the same link to come on. Might as well, might as well, might as well. <laughs> yeah, we could have a good conversation. Delay yeah. be doing some fucking. Delay be fucking out there. See, delay, <laughs> delay single. Shit, I think delay got a divorce or something. He's single, so. Oh. Oh, oh, there you go. Hi. We got two noobs. We got two noobs in this motherfucker. Oh, he's getting his audio together. Okay, we got it now. We got two cappers in here. What's up, noob? What's up, Fire? How you doing, brother? Man, I'm good. We just, I'm, we're just sitting here with T. Gray. We talking to, we just talking, having conversations about fucking. Oh, you got your son back there. Damn. Sorry he running around that. in the background. <laughs> with it brother go with that run that run it Let's run it <laughs> so i'm i'm excited to have both of you all on i got a little overbooked but it's okay made it work bring everybody in um so you guys you're also getting delayed a day might as well make it just a a whole cap of experience experience going That's on right, and yeah. i already had my red on because the guy was sending me vibes already I had my red on. yeah now, now delay we were talking about you know i've been married over 10 years i've been with my wife damn near 20 and uh in the quarantine you know we've been doing some fucking you know but we ain't fucking like when we was 20 <laughs> you know you know how it is hold on one second the hell is he doing probably gotta put a hat on <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he gave his headphones. Proceed, yeah. good brother. Oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> you so, don't know what the said. I don't know. I don't know. So, so, so we're not fucking like we was doing back in our twenties, and in marriage, you know, you know, thing the way you progress in marriage, certain priorities and shit change. You know what I'm True. saying? Mm-hmm. And you've been. Mm-hmm. Fucking for so long, you you it's, you know, you don't even care no more. You you don't you don't care about that. I mean, you you you, you need it, but you ain't. Yeah, it's not that ain't yeah on the hierarchy yeah. of your needs. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So delay with um the quarantine has sex kind of taken a backseat priority wise, or do you still find it on the same level of priority following everything that's going on? I ain't even. Th- I mean, it'll cross my mind if I run across somebody's page or I see something because I'm pretty much inside the whole time. So, mm-hmm. um, nah, it's it's kind of took a backseat for me. It's taking a backseat, and I'm I'm 
more focused on what's going to happen when we come out of the quarantine. Uh, I've already started writing my second book and just being progressive, just not sitting around being like, uh, I'm so bored. I'm, I'm not bored. I'm not bored at all. I've been hearing people say, I'm not bored. Well, if you're bored, then you should find something to occupy that boredom. Right. You right. know, something productive. It's a productive. lot of people getting some work done. It's a lot of people getting yeah, some work done. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot because I believe that people that thrive right now, whoever are the faces of social media right now, the people tuning into their lives, people waiting on their videos to drop, those are the people that are going to take a big jump in their career whenever whenever everything reopens because that's the face that everybody's been seeing. That's who everybody's tuning in for. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the people online, Godfrey, Godfrey online till six in the damn morning. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Afia and Crockett, um, mm-hmm. um, Ali Sadiq, mm-hmm. all these guys, I'm on there pretty regularly. So, you know, I think that's, if you take advantage right now, right now, by giving yourself all, because right now you can expose yourself. You can give yourself all the exposure you need because people are dying for content. Please mm-hmm. give me something. I look at my inbox. If I miss a day of going live, people are like, hey, man, what happened? You was, you, you know, you supposed to... But I've, I've already got the appetite worked up to where I'm feeding it to them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you think that shift is going to be post-corona? Like, you know, they're, there's going to be still a, a big lane and a big calling for people to see you on social media, but then also have to still go and hit some stages and still get on the road. How do you think that's yeah. going to work? First of all, I don't think I don't think we're going to be able to get back full throttle as comedians, even when everything reopens, because right. we got to sit back and watch the public because that's who feeds us the public. So if the public is still scared and fearful of going out, then we're not going to have big crowds. So we're not going to be able to jump right back in the mix. I think it's going to be a block of time for us before everybody gets back comfortable and in the, in the mind frame of where we were, as far as you know, what it seemed like to go watch a real comedy show. Because right now, if you told somebody right now, hey, uh, LaVar is going to be over at um, the Houston Improv. As much as they love him, they're going to be scared. As much as they love to see him perform, they're going to be scared. Everybody's going to be apprehensive. Nobody's going to be like, okay, it's back open. No, you're going to be like, okay, I want to go see him, but somebody in there got that goddamn Rona. Yeah, and then, I think, and then I think, too, it's a stigma attached to it. So even if somebody wants to go to shows, they might feel embarrassed to go because, you know, they'll be like, yo, if I go, motherfuckers go have me on a meme or some shit, tell mm-hmm. that I'm here to die. I came to right. laugh and die and shit. Right. So it's, yeah, it's it's so fucked up. It's it's just crazy. We This, this is crazy, man. It's yeah. really crazy. You know. And this is the new normal right now. Right now. I'm not saying it'll be the same way next year, the same day, but I think like you being able to provide entertainment from your home in the palm of people's hands, right now, that's the safest way to do it. That's your audience, our audience don't trust that. We don't they don't trust going and sitting in a in a in a sold out crowd of even two hundred. People are not gonna take that. People are not going to take where's the social distancing? Right. Motherfuckers right. just coughing and sneezing and shit. Any cough, yes. any sneeze, any you blowing of the nose. Show's over. It's time to go. Yes, right. it's, like, it's, it's almost like everything, everything where people gather is looked at like a big fucking germ hub. Right. It's almost disgusting. You know what I mean? Right. That's that's what's happened with this shit. You know, like even with the comedy store, the cellar, these places, motherfuckers on top of each other like songs. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what brings the rhythm and the vibe for the show. The intimacy, crazy, right? Man. Shit is crazy. So yeah, so people ain't. I don't. I don't know, T. People ain't been thinking about fucking. We just trying to think about getting some money. Yeah, yeah that's why seriously, I that's say, my that's my main goal. That's why I say <laughs> that the the level of priority has definitely changed. Um, because I know a lot of people, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm at the shows I'm with a lot of comedians, it's down the third. And you see how, I guess, after the show, that could be a big part of what comes with it. Mm-hmm. And then that's why I say now, if you have, you have this time, you're reflecting, people who are creative or they're, they're getting new sets together, you know what I mean? It's, is that no longer that focus? Is it no longer the, you know, the focusing on the, the, the starting five chicks you got? Like, is it, let me get, let me hone in on my skills right now. Let me up my game right now because this shit could be gone tomorrow. You know what right. I mean? Whereas some people, 
that was more so their focus. It's like, well, I make the money to get the women. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they go with their hand in hand. So right. that's why I say, you know, some people's kind of, you know, having a... Just, like I've been watching, I don't watch so much goddamn porn. I'm disgusted with porn now. I, I've watched. Listen, I just started critiquing porn. porn, okay? Yeah, like, yeah, like now. Right, I'm just clicking it off. First 30 yeah, seconds is not going to Yeah, and, and now, because I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of a dirty nigga. I'll be watching that fucking homemade porn nigga. And they be fucking. <laughs> yeah, the damn it, your porn is good, though. And nobody changes the fucking smoke alarm. Uh, and they don't change that battery for they smoke along. You know, <laughs> that motherfucker stay beeping and Steve Harvey on in the background and shit. <laughs> and nigga, you hear Steve Harvey family feud. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. Yeah, like man, and it's a dirty house. It'd be clothes and shit on the floor. <laughs> I can almost smell it. That's what's disgusting, you know, because I don't watch you get it. And I can smell, it. I can look at that shit and I know what it smell like in there, like Hennessy right. and blunts and shit, like, <laughs> crazy. Well, I, I, I am a fan of amateur porn, though. <laughs> I like it because people making real noises, like you, when somebody getting fucked good, you know they really getting fucked good. Yo, they got this one, this one young boy, he be killing these hoes. What's his nigga name? I, I can't do the home. I can't do the, uh, Man, the amateur. I, I guess I'm too Hollywood when it comes to that. I need to be able to recognize somebody's face. I need to I be. I don't. I don't do the amateur shit. Is I like that shit, especially. The I need some production shit. with my shit. I need check the out, lighting be out, off. Yo, check out this nigga named Turn Up Monster. Fella, run it all. Check him out. It, wait, his name is Turn Up Monster. Yeah, fella, run it all. He be fella run it all. Murder like dog. Son be killing him. He be killing him in that motherfucker. I'm gonna check him out. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna check him out. I gotta check the boy out and see what he's doing. When, when I, and, then, and then sometimes I watch porn. I don't know if this is somebody. I told somebody this. Like I was watching the porn and I was thinking, I was like, yo, I don't mean to be looking on niggas' dick, but. I want one of them big old ass dicks like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want one of them motherfuckers, yes, man. I love to have me a motherfucker. you what you could handle. Okay. Nigga, God I would love to have one of them fucking poles, nigga. Listen, you <laughs> could be lopsided and, hey, and walking hey, crooked, and it wouldn't work for you. Hey, them niggas be pulling that motherfucker out. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and stroke him. Like, you know, you, you can extend your whole arm yeah. to get it. Like, you... It, all of that. Yeah, I, tried, I tried to get my wife a dick dog. Like, uh, I saw this porn star do a dick dog where he took his balls and he put the balls up and made that bitch look like a hot dog, nigga. Like, I had a dog. I had a fucking little, uh, it was all dirt. Like, a little, you know, you seen them little. <laughs> I don't oh, bitch, you know what this <laughs> dick dog, bitch? <laughs> For a dick dog. <laughs> so I'm just like, really like, I like seriously, like, my mind, because I'm a Virgo, you a Virgo too, right, D-Lay? Mm-hmm. Yep. We Virgos, and the way we think, like, we need a lot of order. Like, we, we be... Like I mind, we need all our shit in order a lot of times as a brother. Yeah, it's an even that's true. You don't give a fuck about sex. Like it's your priorities are so because we like perfectionists in a lot of certain things that we have. Like our minds are are constantly firing off and trying to think of that next thing. What should I be doing? And we're very analytical, so. In these types of times, that shit definitely is, you know, low on the uh, total bow. You know yeah. What I'm yeah. So. Well, thank you, fellas. Look, Delay, I know you only had a little bit of time, so thank you. Delay ain't got nothing to do. What the fuck you talking I'm writing a book. Nothing? You ain't I'm, got shit to do. No, 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 no. Listen, I actually, I do. <laughs> I do. No, you Levar always said it. Levar said I'm the busiest, non busiest nigga. <laughs> yeah, this nigga be like, nigga, I'm in a meeting, and then I see the nigga on Instagram uh, playing the uh, PlayStation Two. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, man, I'm I'm in a meeting, and then I I look, I'm like, this motherfucker said he's having a meeting. <laughs> but see, look, D, like you have to 
like just pause to get those creative juices flowing. That's what helps in your book writing, bro. That's but true. I gotta call you because you know I like to call you. I always like to call D Lay. We just talk for hours sometimes. Like, yeah, I, I ain't gave you your call, man. That hey man, you. listen, I, I, bro, you gotta go live more, Lavar. You have to, bro. You know what, D Lay? I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Uh, I be up and down with that shit because my my heart and my passion, and and I know I have to do it. You know, mm-hmm. with social, I get it. But sometimes my heart and my passion is just so into the into the live performance. And sometimes right. I just retreat. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm, I'm Let me tell you more. why. And I'm going to tell you why you do that. And I'm going to tell you why others do that. It's because at heart, we are stand-up comedians. We stand-up comedians, Period. dog. Like, like we need that live show, that audience. That, live show, that, that, that laughter when you can hear it, that instantaneous gratification. We want that. And... It, sometimes it's like you feel like I got to take a step down to do this when I really do this. But that's the kind of wave that comedy takes. It has these ebbs and flows. And it's we're in a period now where this is the new wave. It'll never be the true art of stand-up. But it's an adjustment that comedy has had to make because of the circumstances. Right. And, you know, I did do – I did a, a – a, Instagram show with um with Ali. Yeah, you know, I saw that. Yeah. Just just to get out of my comfort zone or whatever. Yeah. But yes. It's still like and, and then when I do the video, sometimes I might post five times a day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And go, 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 go. And you know, it, it does help because the yes. way I look at it, my my strategy, you know, when shit was going right, when I would go heavy on videos. I noticed my bookings would increase. So yes, I at, brother. I looked at the videos as passing out flyers, like back in the 90s. You yep. feel me? So now we we in this new game, right? And we can't really perform. But I guess you just got to get ready for the build up or something. So when it opens back up, you can do it. Yeah. Because let me tell you, what this was for a lot of people. It, it's a little bit more difficult to try to present your comedy this way. But like for me, for Billy Sorrell's damn fool, our podcast, Did You Miss Me? We just talking to each other. We don't have no audience. So we so you we, we got over a hundred episodes. So we'll sit in there and just talk straight to the camera. It may be a strong ass punchline, but another comedian ain't giving you that, it ain't it ain't putting that juice right. on it. So you don't know if it's funny. So it becomes now I can't rely on what the response is, mm-hmm. I got to tell it from a, a, a state of a feeling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If, you, if, you, if I asked you to tell me, I mean, how was it when you, when you first uh, went to school, uh, when you first joined a basketball team? You'll remember what that feeling is and you'll tell it from that perspective. But if you tell it from mm-hmm. a perspective of punchline, 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 it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'll sit in front of this camera. I got a show May 14th. Uh, it's a Zoom comedy show. I can sit in front of this camera and talk to your ass for an hour. I don't give a shit if I don't hear nobody laugh because I'm telling you something that's from a, from a position of a feeling. I may be mm. telling you how it was when I grew up. I may be telling you about the experience I had when I was overseas. So the, for me, it's not, I'm not waiting on that punch. I don't, I'm not waiting mm. on that. And for yeah. com- you know, comedians, that silence can be very distracting. Mm. Because so silence, be silence. I, I noticed even with me, dude, I had to learn that, uh, you know, when you start getting funny, you know, when you when you get a little bit funny, especially doing urban comedy, you know how we mm-hmm. came up hard in urban right. rooms, silent, after you get funny, after you get over the booze and bombing and shit, right. a lot of comic silence is their biggest fear. And silence is your biggest uh, proponent because I once agree. I, you know, you, you you can build such a solid setup in silence, and then when you hit their ass, mm-hmm. you gonna knock them on the floor. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So that, and then that goes into pacing and time and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So this has been great. We didn't talk. Yeah. We we hardly talked about sex because. T no. it's, about fuck. No. Oh, that's yeah. what you like, T. You like the nasty <laughs> shit. Oh, listen. This is about no. fucking. 
That's what this is about. I saw it in her face so when I first came on. I was like, Listen. That girl got a fucking face on. That girl is not, this don't seem like the, the, this is my normal is. face. Okay, plus the makeup. But granted, that is the title of my show. But these conversations and the way that they flow, believe me, we talk about just about everything on my show. Yeah, so, it's rich. This was this is some rich, rich conversation. And I, I think like people need to know from a perspective how we feel in this pandemic and how how we present what we our gifts. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people don't have any idea. They're like, oh, this is gonna be funny. You sh shut the fuck up. That's not what it is. That's not like that. Right. You know I, what I mean? Purposely, I purposely in the interviews, I try I, I just like to be as natural as possible. You right. know what I'm saying? So because I think if you funny, you just funny. That's you're like, funny, bro. Like, just, you're just be funny. just be. It's no reason for me to come on the book. Well, yeah, and then I did this and that. And it, like that's too much, you know. Yeah. What I'm so, but you see, know, being on my show just in general, because you guys have never met me in person, but just the way my how I am and how I flow, it's not a time for you to be on. You know what I mean? When you sit down with me and when we're vibing and when we're talking, it's just just me and Lavar, just me and Delay. It's not. But, but, but stage, I know, I know, you know I know you done had, I know you done had comics on that motherfucker. You like Nick. So I know you there had come. You like nigga, chill. I'll be quite honest with you. This is the first season of my show, and then chill. my Corona Chronicles is like my new little, you know, special segment that I'm doing right now. But it's been two comedians who, like, they were still on, and it didn't make for the best interview because no. it, it, it's some horrible real interview. shit trying to have a real conversation, and you still. Granted, the fans like it. The that's that's the most views on the YouTube, but maybe for me and for the conversation it did to me it wasn't a good interview i can mm. appreciate this real conversation we on some real shit how this situation is affecting comedy is big granted it's affecting all genres of entertainment but we need the laughs just as much as y'all need to give them mm. so everybody's kind of hurting behind missing that piece so one right, i right. do just salute you guys who are hitting on these lives who are doing these show I, I, at least the deacon what he did with his the corona comedy club i'm fucking enjoying every wednesday and friday yeah, you know yeah. I mean? how you guys still make your your podcast stay relevant and you know are giving us the visual as opposed to just being able to hear it you know it helps it helps i can right. understand why people be in your dm like where you at on the live kevin tate do a yeah. live every night every, every night <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like, like, i want to say I what is it d like, what is the energy like in L.A. right now? Because this has been just such a blow to fucking L.A. Like, God damn. Yeah, What's man, it's like it's it's still it's scary. You know what I mean? Like, I don't go outside unless I have to go outside. Um, But you see people outside when you are outside, people are like really moving. They're just trying to get out of it. You know what I mean? They just because it's scary. You don't know who you are coming in contact with. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know. You know, I live downtown LA. Y'all got you know? thirty nine. Y'all got thirty nine million people in Cal in the state of California. Y'all got twenty two hundred deaths, Bruh. And that's why I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> regardless of what, what people have told you, you should you, whatever governor orders is making that like, just logically thinking, y'all don't have a handle on this crisis. Why would I go expose like that's just? And I get it. Here's the deal. People need to work. I get that. Hello, you see that? You see that number? Yeah. That that's your probability of dying from uh, COVID nineteen. Right. Right. So but you move that decimal point it. two places. It's, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. It makes no sense to me, dude. I'm I'm you know, I try like dude. I being like being a pharmacist, studying sciences and math and all this shit. And looking at these probabilities, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then it's like, it's, it's something bigger than what we know with this whole COVID-19 because um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like they're counting the deaths differently. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if you have COVID-19. Nigga, if I, go, if I go to the hospital with a gunshot, they're going to say I died of COVID-19. COVID right. You can have a gunshot, real shit. Because I think each death is worth what thirty five thousand per hospital. 
that's if they have to put you on the respirator. So it's thirteen thousand for no respirator and thirty nine thousand if they have Listen, to put you on the respirator. I, I wouldn't be surprised, like in that Ahmad Aubrey case, mm -hmm. the white boys get up and like, uh, we've come to the conclusion it was COVID nineteen. It was COVID nineteen, Less. right? It, 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 it wasn't the gunshot that killed him. It was COVID nineteen. <laughs> but wasn't the gunshot? Right. We Absolutely. watched the nigga die right here. It was COVID. You're right there. We I mean, we could have saved him if we had some respirators, but uh, yeah. we didn't have any ventilators. So yeah. some bitch died. Yeah. And, yeah. I I just I mean I think it's a bigger plot than what we know, and 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 in and in, in knowing that I just think you just got to just take take precautions. I'm not saying just go. Just protect yourself. Just protect yourself. And if you don't have to go outside or be around people, I know you hear it time and time again, but then people are not listening. People are not listening. People are just jumping out. And because we just, we, we're tired of being in, I get it. I am too, but I'm not tired of living. I don't want to, I, even if it, I see the probability uh, of me dying, I still don't want to get it. Bro, they just, you know I mean? they just extended y'all stay at home order in LA for another three months. Are you serious? Yeah, I just saw that. It just popped up in the LA Times. They just extended it another three months. Oh, LA County, shit. with all certainty, will keep stay-at-home orders in place through July. Wow, wow. that's hey. fucking crazy. You know, and it's like, and, man, and, and, that, and now it's politicized. Mm -hmm. See, now it's being politicized. Now, as you see, Georgia's reopening. Georgia's a red state. Texas is reopening. Texas is a red state. Red state right. New York is a blue state. California is a blue state. Mm -hmm. And y'all don't have near the numbers to, to extend that order. It's no reason. I'm sorry. It, it, yeah, it's, it, no that, it's, it's been political off the rip. It's like, I mean, and then the way, I don't even want to get into, you know, how the president is handling. That's a whole nother topic. But he don't know what is, the fuck he's doing, but how, how can people be <laughs> surprised? We got a fucking reality show real estate mogul running the fucking country. How, how could people be surprised he don't know what the fuck he's doing? Of course he doesn't know. He shouldn't. Yes, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. I'm amazed at how stupid people can be. Like, like I mean, some of the stuff that he says, I'm like, Okay, I, I get just being a supporter, but like at what point do you say, okay, this motherfucker don't know what he's talking about? He like this, this motherfucker, at some point that has to come to your mind. Like this guy don't know what he's talking about. He, oh, he, he just said the other day, he said um, the valet, one of the valets caught COVID-19. And he said, he said, I don't understand it. That's, that's why I tell you that the tests are not really needed because just a couple of days ago, she didn't have COVID-19, she tested negative. And then today she tested positive. So that's why I'm like, nigga, that's how the shit go. Mm -hmm. You could take a pregnancy mm -hmm. test last week and then you get popped up and, and take another one and you'll be pregnant today. So it's like, that's, that's what testing is. Yeah. And the fact that he makes these asinine comments and nobody is it's becoming, it's becoming normalized. He said so much crazy shit. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that he tripping. That's just, that's just Trump being and it, Trump. And, 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 then, and then what's so sad about it, and that, and that boils down to the, the popular vote versus the electoral college, is that an overwhelming majority of the country, uh, individual voters, voted for Hillary Clinton. Now we got to suffer for motherfucking uh, Bubba right. in, the, in mm -hmm. the fucking woods who mm -hmm. voted this fuck in. Hey, everybody got to suffer for this shit. Yeah. It's crazy to me. So, LeVon, let me ask you really quickly, if you just haven't, you know, of the background as a pharmacist, and what do you think about the probability of the vaccine being legit and and actually working? Do you think that it's something um, that's going to come to pass? Well, yeah, I believe a vaccine will work. Um, I give flu shots and mm -hmm. shingle shots and all kinds of vaccines are all the time. Uh, and then your body too, when you come into contact with somebody with, uh, what is that? What the hell is that noise? Hold on, what the fuck is that? You hear that? I heard you talking shit. I said, you hear that? That's Trump, he heard Trump you. is in on this shit. <laughs> <laughs>
Man. <laughs> he got some flying over his house right now. It's like, oh, you don't talk shit about me, do you? <laughs> I was, what the the reason behind me asking him, not only because he's a pharmacist about the vaccine, then also with you all speaking about um, our current president, he owns stock in the company that's making the vaccine. So when it comes to, you know, conspiracy theories and things of that nature, do you think well, then, that that's oh, you. allowed to happen? Or, you know, because, oh, hey, I can make money on the back end? Well, you're not gonna have. You know Wait, what, what you say? What what y'all say? What you saying? I said Trump is out here playing with people's lives because he's going to cash in on it. I mean, Trump don't know what the hell he's doing. He don't know what the fuck he's doing. And but we do know this. It's always a money play with him. It is yeah. always a money play. He yeah. he still yeah. hasn't he hasn't um take taken his fingers off his company. He's you know, you can't let your oh I'm not gonna run it, but I'm gonna let Caleb and Jojo run it. Nigga, you running it? That's just, just like if I say believe. this, I'm stepping away from Delay Enterprises. I won't do it. So Caleb and JoJo will take it. I, I don't have anything to do with it. You think I'm not going to have some input on what my sons do with my business? Mm -hmm. Dude, Absolutely. I can't believe they letting this motherfucker get away with so much of this shit. That's what's it, crazy. I, at this point, I just want to see how much shit he can get away with now. Now it's like, okay, let's see what he's going to do. Like, what, what is the breaking point for America? Like, what, what, at what point do you say, okay, that's, that, that's enough of this shit? And Probably now it's like, let's just let's push the, the envelope. Election. And he doesn't, he would love to have an absentee uh, um, um, election. He would love that. He just hired the postmaster, um, a big donor of his, to be, you know, he's the, head, he's the postmaster for all post offices. So you, so you don't think if they had a stay at home, if they had um, a vote by mail situation, you don't think that would benefit Trump? Of course it would. Anybody that he puts in place, it's, it's, it's for, it has to benefit him, period. Yeah. He hiring motherfuckers ain't even qualified. Right. He, I mean, you ain't even got to be qualified. If, if you say the right shit about me, yeah, you in there. Director of National Security has no experience. No. in national intelligence has no experience in intelligence. None. I think he had maybe like a few months. And you got people that's been like, like that, are, that are lifelong, you know, intelligence people that, that are not, in his mind, qualified. Or he's not hiring. So mm -hmm. it's always a money play, man. And it has to suit the interests of Trump. Not to get all political, but that's just that's just my take on it. Yeah, it is what it is. But yeah. thank you. Yeah. I have enjoyed you, fellas. This thank afternoon. you, Chip. Thank you, Chip. I really thank appreciate you, thank you for having man. me. Hey, brother, we got to wrap, man. Yo, man, all day, man. Anytime, bro. I got to chop it up with you, man. Shit. I hit you up. You, you know, I'm going to call. You know me, nigga. Yes, yes. So you better yes. pick up the goddamn phone. I will, good brother. I'm about to get started on writing my book. Book number two, first book. If you ain't got it, I got to see you a copy, LaVar. I got to see you a copy of The Journey what's, Behind the Smile. What's the title of your first book? The Journey Behind the Smile. Where is my book? Hold up. Yeah, it ain't no little pamphlet either. My shit is a, is a book, book. It's beautiful, Yeah, man. you got to sit your ass right. down and read this. Yeah. Do you, do you, did you do an audible? I, I'm doing the uh, audio version next month. Uh, I don't, but my, dude, I don't know if I'm getting stupid from that because I just, I just listen to books now. No, that's that's not that's not you know that's just the it's the way you like to retain. Dumb. It's just so. Funny. But let me. <laughs> I was like, I literally has, uh, lay in my bed and listen to books all the time. That's cool. Yeah, that, I think as long, as long as you get the information, you know, some people need to read every word. Some people need to. It's more of a, an audio thing for people. But my book has a, a audio version in it. Uh, I got a. a the, the first autobiography to have uh, audio inside. So uh, I'm being innovative and, and changing the game up and just trying to be, just trying to bring something different. I love it, man. Most I love definitely. It, well, thank right, you, bro. fellas, both for being on right. the love below. You, I truly appreciate it. LaVar Walker, got D-Lay. Oh, Two super talented men. I can't wait for things to open back up because at some point y'all are going to meet me in person so y'all can catch this. Absolutely. Time. In real time. Yeah, I'm going to get it in real life. I'm going to have it in real life. I got to have super, it. I'm a super, super support of the DYMM podcast. I love you guys. I've had Billy on my show. He was phenomenal. So you guys keep doing what you're doing. I keep bringing those laughs. Okay. Thank you, Tiff. All right. Thank you. All right, brother. All right. Bye-bye. All right, man.